Welcome to the Health Revolution. And in this episode, episode number 12, we're going to be concentrating on one particular element, and that element is sulfur. Now, sulfur is such an overlooked element. It's missing from foods these days, missing from the soils, and it's missing from our bodies. Now, the incredible results you can get from sulfur uh, are very much dependent on the quality of the sulfur and how much you take. Now, we're going to learn all about it. We're going to be joined by Patrick McGeehan. Patrick, are you there? I am. Brilliant. Thank you very much. And I apologize to viewers that we don't have a video to show of Patrick, but we do have some uh, uh, beautiful pictures of uh, crystals of sulfur and a picture of Patrick uh, himself for you to, to look at. So welcome, Patrick. Tell us everything about sulfur. <laughs> just, just start at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, hi, thank you very, very much for, uh, you know, I'm not, when I first wrote to you, I didn't think, I didn't know you did a radio show or a TV show. I didn't, I, there was something else that got me to contact you, but it's, I'm, uh, I take this as an opportunity. The, uh, in 1999, my son was diagnosed with germ cell reproductive testicular cancer, and he had a testicle the size of a Texas grapefruit. He not not comfortable, clearly. No, no, he'd just come from camp. He'd just been at camp, <laughs> hiding this monstrous thing. And um, so, uh, you know, I'm, I have a medical background in that I, I worked at the medical center instead of killing people during the war. And I learned a few things, and, you know, so I got him to see all the doctors, and they took all the tumors out and took the testicle away and t informed us that he would die. No matter what anybody did, he would die. He would not see his 21st birthday. And I'd been away from medicine, and, you know, when I heard that, and I figured, well, gee, you know, I don't really want to lose him. I sort of liked him. And uh, that began the, the, the research, and then I realized I didn't know what I was researching for. And an old man, an 89-year-old man named Jay Farmer, threw me a bag of sulfur and said, take that instead of those damn Tums. And that's how it started. And so you started taking the sulfur... Oh, yeah. I mean, in four days, I had no gastroenteritis of any kind. And That'll uh, get your attention. Yes. And uh, you know, uh, it would, wouldn't it? And, and uh, tell us a bit more about your son. Um, it took a while, did it, before your son accepted what his father had to say as far as advice is concerned? Oh, he never listened to me. You know, I don't know if you know the name of Mike Jones Pritchard, right. who used to work for Lignosol back in... Uh, the early 70s, and uh, he published an article about 28,000 women in, in Great Britain who had already been cut and burned and poisoned, and now their cancer was back, and they were being suggested to get cut and burned and poisoned again, and instead they took organic sulfur. Now, back then it was MSM, and that was, was a good quality variety of MSM, but after 25 years, all 28,000 of these women were, one, alive, Two had a, reoc had a reoccurrence of their cancer, and felt better than they had in twenty years. Wow! Now that's what got my son to take the sulfur. He would never listen to his father. How ridiculous, Clive! I mean, how can you be so? <laughs> Does your dad listen to you? No, no, never, no. Yeah, I mean, and that's uh, and so for our study, I run into people who want to tell their folks, and I say, well, look, when you really come to a stumbling wall, just make a three-way call, and we'll, I'll try to make them laugh. Laughter is one of the few ways that we can actually make glutathione. Oh, is that right? Yeah, but you laugh in the indoor, or you have an orgasm, and the laughter in, or the orgasm or this joy degrades to glutathione. You've just manufactured glutathione without nothing. How very interesting. So I, I'm keen to know what happened to your son. Um, he's got a uh, 2013 Mini Cooper. He's a boiler maker in Gardner, Kansas, and he's got a wife. And uh, we don't talk <laughs> naturally. <laughs> we, don't, we don't talk. So uh, the interesting part is he hasn't taken a cell phone since 2005. Right, but it clearly had some part in his healing. Well, and it has in, you know, we've got 103 total end-stage cancer folks who just flat refuse to die. They just won't do it. They have a note from the doctor, go and die, and they won't do it. 
and they also don't go back to see the doctor. They're going on cruises, and some of them, they, you know, I hate it when the women tell you that they don't have to buy vaginal lubricants anymore. These are 80-year-olds. So it seems that um, both for men and women, sulfur has a rather beneficial effect. Tell us about that. Well, the, the book is Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus or something like that. No, we're, we're all the same biology. And so the problems that women have, sulfur addresses, is allow cells to regenerate. Uh, and matter of fact, we have 70-year-old women who call us and they say, I'm spotting. And I said, it's okay, it'll pass. Goodness. But their bodies are trying. You know, this, I'm going to make another baby. I don't care what you say. And you think that's... It, it, Sorry, go on. Oh, it do I think it's the sulfur? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, the uh, what, is Sussex County. How many people in Sussex County? I don't know. Well, there's 250,000 people in 44 countries that we make those claims about because they are either lying to us or they're communicating with each other or they're telling the truth. So you've got almost, I think, 200,000 people in your study on sulfur, is that right? 250,000. Wow. And you've, you've been at it for, for how long? How many years? 15 years since my son was diagnosed. So um, uh, let's first of all clarify what sulfur is, because we're talking about organic sulfur rather than the pure elemental yellow fluffy stuff that uh, we're, we're, we're perhaps familiar with. What we're talking about here is, uh, if I've got it right, methyl sulfonomethane. Correct. Now, uh, I don't know, you know, I know a little bit about you, but I don't know if about, enough about you. Do you remember a Ron Howard movie called Cocoon? Yes, I do. Okay, well, if you take the aliens out of the equation, you have the story of sulfur. Because the pods were left by the Antarians millions of years ago, anchored next to the black smokers. So the, so the, the, the volcanic oxygen. vents. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, that's, that's how organic sulfur happens. When the, when the black smokers release the sulfur into the, into the salt water, the salt releases the sulfur into the mouths of the plankton, and everything in the ocean eats plankton. I have heard it said that it's around those volcanic vents under the sea that all, all life begins. Um, or or new, new life it, is formed. In yeah, yeah. And yes, no, I mean, you know, it's... It really depends on what you consider new life on the planet. We're just, we're just going through the cycles of life. You know, is it really new life or is it just the cycles of life? Sulfur is a cycle. It's, you know, it's in your body and 12 hours later it's out of your body. And along with it is 146 different compounds of things that can kill you. We haven't lost anybody in our study. Clive, we just haven't lost a single soul, and we've tried to kill every single person, Brit as well as non-Brits. So, um, uh, clarify what you mean by that. I mean, surely some people must have dropped away on, with natural causes. How do you mean exactly? You haven't lost any? No, they haven't even died of natural causes. So, um... Uh, we haven't lost any, but yeah, we I mean, we've had people who stopped taking sulfur and then died of natural causes. But the people who are taking sulfur aren't dying of natural causes. So you're saying it's a longevity tool? I'm, I'm saying it's the mineral that John David Rockefeller took away from us all with the help of Bayer and I.G. Farben and the excessive money they made from aspirin. Sulfur replaces aspirin. You don't take aspirin, you take a teaspoon of sulfur. You put it under your tongue or wherever you part, where in your mouth you want, and the pain goes away. Shingles goes away. It takes about seven, 70 minutes, you know, a teaspoon every 10 minutes. But we've verified that we can't kill anybody. Excellent. That's, all, that's always encouraging, I think, not to kill anybody. Well, I think so. And, and Stanley Jacob did all the work for us. He tried to kill Oregon death row inmates with a half a pound a day, <laughs> and they got pasty poop. <laughs> and then they abolished the death penalty in Oregon. Oh, can you imagine sitting on death row, and they abolished the death penalty, and now you're going to be on death row for the rest of your life? Gosh. 
The last person to escape from an, an American prison was Tim Timothy Leary. Uh, quote, pardon me, a friend of mine. Oh, really? Yeah. He, he uh, gave a lecture at the University of Utah, and I was right up front with a camera. And he was, he, by the time the, the lecture was done, he had played for me, and he said, I'd love to get copies of that. And I opened up the camera, so it was empty. And he said, you just Timothy Leary, Timothy Leary. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm yeah, anxious to, to hear some more stories about what sulfur can do because uh, I've got a list in front of me of uh, a whole number of things. Um, uh, well, actually, let me, let, me, let me just go back to the movies, Cocoon. Yeah. Um, the, uh, what we, well, you know, when people call me on the phone, when they've heard about sulfur from someone, that's how they hear about us. Or they hear about it from someone that we do not exist on the web. I'm sorry. And um, they, I'll listen to an hour or two or three hours of complaints. And it's the last time I hear those complaints. Even on a five-day callback, which is recommended, I don't hear the complaints. And when they reorder, I don't hear the complaints. But I, I hear about, well, you know, my, my cousin's got uh, lumbago. It must be an old person to have, you know, lumbago. And uh, I said, well, you know, let's find out. It's a study. That's how we've grown, is the people in Latvia tell people in Canada. And we always ask, how'd you hear about us? Who told you? Who told you? And, you know, and it's, and it's just really very fascinating to see how word of mouth can reach so many people. It's because it works. I'm not that clever. You know, and I don't, I don't have the credentials to say that I'm a great research scientist. I'm a photographer. You know, I, I photograph stuff, and it allows you to compare the changes. That's what the photography is valuable for. Lee Allen uh, wrote a book, A Hole in My Vision. Anybody who's worried about macular regeneration, I really think you ought to add sulfur to your diet. There are cells that can regenerate. It's a scar that can be repaired. So you could reverse macular degeneration with sulfur? Yeah. I've photographed so much macular degeneration, I would say no, but I'm sorry, these people are calling and saying they can actually see the wall where the big E is. The wall was gone the last time. Uh-huh. And uh, so uh, I, I, I'm a type 1 diabetic, and I've had a, a, sm a small amount of retinal uh, damage, retinal bleed in one eye some years ago. And okay, I, and you have scar tissue. Yeah. So. Okay, and that scar tissue goes away. That scar tissue goes away. Uh, and this now, is... This, yeah. Sorry, go on. Yeah. Well, the, the, we have a, an 84-year-old woman whose who's former banker is now interested in health issues, and she's been on insulin for three years, just three years, but she's not on insulin anymore. Now, that's a big deal. I mean, even if it's late-stage misdiagnosis, I'm sorry, she's no longer on the insulin. You've been on insulin since you were 12. True. Uh, well, I, actually, from my early thirties. Really, a, tr a traumatic thing, or what? I went uh, to the doctors, and they gave <laughs> me antibiotics. I never mm. sort of accepted them because directly after the antibiotics, my body fell to pieces. I became okay. completely arthritic. A million things went wrong. Uh, luckily, okay, well, you're now better I'm fine. Good. Yeah. Okay. And the uh, but the Isles of Langerhorn are really, really difficult things to entice into regeneration. Yes, quite. And, but add sulfur to your diet and your blood sugars go down 20%. Add cinnamon bark to your diet from Ceylon and they go down another 20%. We have a lot of people who are not on oral meds anymore. We have nobody on oxygen supply. Nobody. Well, brilliant. Uh, certainly I'd recommend cinnamon. I, I, I use cinnamon and uh, sometimes also a herb called Gymnema sylvestri. Um, Jim Nema, I don't know whether you've ever played with that. That has the remarkable effect. If you give somebody a, a taste of the herb in liquid form, for instance, then you give them a spoonful of sugar, they can't taste anything sweet. It, it takes away your desire for sweet things and also your taste, taste for it literally. Yeah. Eat, eat a spoonful of sugar, tastes taste like a spoonful of sand. Yeah, and the, the same holds true with... Uh, organic sulfur after about three weeks, which is terribly bitter. Nine three is the pH of uh, organic sulfur in distilled water, and then you can take a teaspoon of sugar, 
and you can take a teaspoon of xylitol, and you can't tell the difference. Uh -huh. Now, uh, how, how do you take the, uh, the MSM? It comes you know, as a crystal. Well, actually, for, yeah, for, forgive me for saying this, but I do this for the benefit of your audience. There isn't a brand of MSM that we know of on the planet that works. It's why we do what we do. So if you're not adding organic sulfur to your system, then you're probably not doing yourself a favor, and you will never make scar tissue go away. So we should be making the distinction between MSM as it's traditionally sold, which uh, has a limited effect because it won't dissolve scar tissue, and what you're calling organic sulfur, which does dissolve scar tissue. Is that right? It's the key to why we call it organic sulfur. It can't, if it can't regenerate the cells, it can't regenerate scar tissue. And we just haven't found anybody reporting, you know, of the people who make and pro proclaim MSM that they see that. Dr. Jacobs wrote that it should be possible, but he was using organic sulfur. He wasn't just using MSM at the time. Herschler found organic sulfur. This is a, a, a chemist for uh, Crown Fellerbach who was sent to Oregon to find out why they wouldn't let him dump the dimethyl sulfoxide into the river. Stinky old lumber plant that it was. And so he said, well, give it to me and I'll sell it. I'll get rid of it. I'll do something with it. And that's, that's when MSM started to be a business in the United States, 1946. And as soon as Stanley Jacobs wrote his book, MSM, The Miracle Cure to Pain, or Miracle Solution to Pain, all of a sudden everybody was selling MSM and the pharmaceutical companies were doing all the packaging. And we know what uh, we think about them and how trustworthy they might be. I'm thinking about rewriting all of uh, Dickens's work and inserting pharmaceuticals in for every bad guy. Yeah. Because we're not synthetic. There's no, I'm sorry, there's no part of you that is not, you know, that is synthetic, Clive. There isn't any part of you that's synthetic. And yet that's how we want to treat all of our bodily conditions with synthetic things so we can patent them and make a lot of money. Well, hey, I'm sorry, my, my health is a little more important than the money you're going to make. But it's my responsibility to do that, it's not theirs. So you were saying that the um, taste uh, is pr pretty bitter. Uh, oh, it's nasty. So what's the oh, best yeah. way to, to, to take it and, and mask the taste? You know, how, how do you recommend it? <laughs> How do, you, how do the English drink their gin and with, with lime? Right. One teaspoon of lime, uh, reconstituted, works fine. Uh, one teaspoon of maple syrup, two tablespoons of organic sulfur, and 32 ounces of water. And all of the attendees at the Dallas, Texas, Weston A. Price meeting never complained about the taste. And 75 doctors, all type A, came back and wanted to know what the hell was in the punch. And what would they have noticed? Uh, increased energy. Right. You know, I mean, uh, why do type A doctors become heroin and, and co or cocaine addicts? Because they feel, you know, the buzz. They, you know, they're drawn to it. And so they, they thought they'd been dosed. I see. They bought sulfur, so they didn't sue anybody. <laughs> So you know, this is, uh, just real quick, I spent seven years sort of against my will as a conscientious objector, but I learned stuff. I went into the real world to find out how nasty the real world was, and then my son was going to die of cancer. Now, because of the, these accidents, you know, this old man throwing me a bag of sulfur and, and what's gone on, we really do have a way to recapture the health of every person on the planet. No one need be sick. So that's a pretty sweeping statement. Uh, do you think that sulfur is at the root of what percentage of illnesses? Uh, I agree with Linus Pauling that, you know, all of our modern diseases are a result of a missing mineral. He didn't ever find out that it was sulfur because he read the journals. He didn't, you know, he didn't go out and kick the dirt. Interesting. And so let, let's look at the properties of sulfur. It, it's... Uh, an oxygen carrying mechanism, would that be right? In the same way that iron carries 
or is responsible for the hemoglobin carrying oxygen in the blood. Um, it, it never, it never, it, you know, there isn't a sulfate of oxygen, and there really is no oxide of sulfur. There's other forms, but they're not an oxide of sulfur. So the sulfur carries the uh, oxygen. Like, think of it as a train. You got a, you got the, the, uh, the what is that thing they call it that, that runs the train? What do they call it? The, the yeah, train. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, these words are tough. So you got the beginning of the train. You got the 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 beds, and then you've got the caboose. Well, the 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 engine is hydrogen. The caboose is hydrogen, and the sulfur allows the oxygen not to interact with everything. You don't have free radicals when you have enough sulfur because the oxygen is always chaperoned. When it gets to the cell membrane, in goes the oxygen, a large molecule, and it pushes the trash, the aluminum, the lead, the mercury out, and if the sulfur is there, they sulfate and go to the toilet. If they're not there, like Hal Huggins says, then they go to other parts of your body and just cause more trouble. So they take the uh, unwanted toxins, sulfate them, make, making them thus dissolvable, and then you can excrete them. Well, make them... Uh, no. The NIH is, NIH's article on sulfur and radiation is probably the most interesting. It doesn't tell you how to do this. It just says once sulfated, radioactive particles and elements leave the body harmlessly. Well, that's massively important, bearing in mind Fukushima getting worse, isn't it? Well, you know, the, we have as much trouble in Hanford, Washington, with groundwater contamination from that nuke. I think the problem we have are the nukes. You know, we've got sunlight. I mean, we could use sunlight. You know, don't, we could use sunlight. Does the wind blow in England? We could use the wind. You know, we don't have to burn up everything on the planet just so the oil men and, and all the 1% can be rich. We can actually become proactive, and we can install solar panels on our roof. Wow. That wasn't hard. I'm not a great fan of wind farming, uh, partly because what they seem to have overlooked are the frequencies coming off the big turbines. Well, you may want to look this guy up. Um, his name is Howard Fuller. And he's developed a Tesla water turbine into a bladeless wind turbine. It's about the size of a, a small lorry, and you can replace all the big turbines with this one little thing, and it produces energy from 3 miles per hour up to 100 miles per hour. Wow. And it doesn't kill eagles. You know, I'm Cherokee, so I'm sorry. Going around killing eagles is really dumb. I didn't know the there were any left. The, oh, yeah, there's some left because some eagles are, you know, haven't been eating GMO, so they don't run into the blades. Good. So, that, was a GMO joke. that was a GMO joke. Yeah, it really was. Okay. <laughs> so tell us about the sort of things we can expect to see if we start to take organic sulfur. How, how are we going to feel? What's going to happen? Um, what are we going to get cured of if we're ill? Uh, what we're going to get cured of if we're ill is, is probably, the, you know, uh, I don't have a list of all these diagnoses that people throw at me because I don't care. It's biology. You either get oxygen into the cell or you don't. You either get the trash out or you don't. It really is that simple. We follow our study members with face photographs, and when they stop aging, it could be because they're regenerating their 80 and 90 and 100-year-old cells. We do not have women who sit on their butt all day long because it says, oh, I'm just, it hurts too much to go to the potty. So they don't drink water, and it gets worse. No, now they spring up and go to the potty when it's time to go to the potty. I mean, you know, this is... This is kindergarten for 90 and 80 and 70 year olds, and it's really very fascinating. Um, when you feel good, you 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 become a citizen. You're no longer complaining about everything that's going on with you. It, you just it's 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 just I'm having a ball, Clive. So sulfur makes people happier. 
I post if Dick Cheney would take organic sulfur twice a day, and for those people who don't know Dick Cheney is, then I won't bother you. Uh, he'd become a nice guy. He wouldn't shoot his attorney in the face with a shotgun anymore. You know, I mean, he'd become, and he wouldn't treat his daughter badly. He'd become a nice guy. And we know that because girls who put, you know, Dick Cheney to shame, they become really nice angels. Well, you could be onto some, something there if you've got a product where everybody becomes nice. It's, uh, uh, good. Organic sulfur makes girls beautiful no matter their age, and men, especially men with serious opinions, less stupid. Good. <laughs> well, there's, there's a lot of stupid around, that's for sure. So, well, well, good. I think, think we've got the answer it. for everything then. And, yeah, um, if, if, we get, if, if your biology is right, then you don't do stupid things. Well, exactly. It, it does certainly help to get right, the right nutrition. I mean, it, it's clear to anybody who goes to a very, very poor neighborhood that the people there, unfortunately, because of the bad food and lack of nutrition, don't have their brains functioning as well as they might. Um, is sulfur inexpensive enough that those of us who have little money can actually afford to eat it? Uh, that's an interesting question. Um, the, the folks who, who sell our sulfur in France, it sells for $57 per pound. And, and, and I thought that was a little ridiculous, even though that's only thirty nine ninety five in U.S. dollars, and that fluctuates. But my goodness, they talk to each other. Why? What is it about you, you know, the Europeans and English? You actually talk to each other? Don't you know there are rules against that? <laughs> Well, I, you know, I mean, since we started sending sulfur to to France, we now send them a thousand pounds a month. And I didn't really realize this, but to order something from France is like ordering from something from the United States. I, I mean, it's not that much water, and they still want millions of dollars. Well, yeah, they, they, they charge quite a lot of tax generally. Just the moment you cross the pond with, with something, but. Uh, so, so how much how much do you need to take to get a decent effect, and how much is that going to cost people a month? If if, if we swap pound dollars for pounds, uh, you know that works out pretty evenly once you've imported it and got taxed on then, it. Then yeah, then it's going to cost about fifty cents a day. Right. Okay. Well, that that's hopefully doable for for a lot of people. So. Um, so, so it's providing oxygen, as Otto Warburg proved by winning the Nobel Prize. If a cell has enough oxygen, it stays a healthy cell and doesn't become cancerous. So that, that's a pretty good thing. Uh, we've got uh, longevity, a uh, happier sex life, more happiness. What else have we got? What else is it going to do for us? Remembering who we are. That's always useful. That may be the most important thing of all. Um, you know, you're old enough that there's certain things you can't remember you don't want to remember. And the feedback that I get are people are remembering only the things they want to remember. They're not remembering the traumas. They're not remembering the crap. They're remembering the good stuff. They're remembering old friends that they've forgotten about, that they really were, and they're looking for them. So we... You know, <laughs> A friend is maybe the most valuable thing you can have. I mean, our families always prove to us that they don't really support what we're doing. But a friend's a valuable thing to have. And, you know, a good friend's a valuable thing to keep alive. Well, exactly. And so I, I, are you saying that it's uh, a tonic for the brain? Rudy Tanzi got a Nobel Prize in 1992 for proving that Alzheimer's was aluminum lead and mercury plaque in the blood-brain barrier. We have a whole bunch of people who've gotten their money back from the homes that they'd already put a deposit on for a bed because they couldn't remember what home they'd left the money at. You know, I mean, there are a lot of single women in California, and, I mean, that's where this went on. You know, and 55 of the women went and got their deposit backs, and 500 of them aren't going. Really? They're alive again. 
you know, they're not worried about stuff. We've got a little lady in, in Bedford-Stuyvesant in New York. There's no place in London as bad as Bedford-Stuyvesant. And she goes to the grocery store by herself now, all alone, not afraid of anything. So it's given, given her bravery. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> four foot nine inches tall. <laughs> Whack him over the over the head with a pound of sulphur. Well, you don't, you know, any idiot woman who's going to come out on the streets late at night alone, she's either packing heavy or she's got a you know a chainsaw. <laughs> I think it's different in England. We're, we're, it's safe here. Um, well, and, and it wouldn't it be nice to stay that way? Certainly would. So, because so, if you know if if economic ruin is 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 rained down on on the UK, you know, let me let me change the subject if I can, because uh, you know the you're in London, or, I mean you're in England, and I have not spoken to Andy Wakefield, but we want Andy Wakefield to be our UK study director, serious as you can be. Yeah, good idea. And you know, and I and I read the blogs when when the dear women of of uh, Great Britain wanted to hang him, and he left because they were threatening his family. But he's he's correct. We don't need the vaccinations. You know, that means the kids become collateral damage. Now, if you have an autistic child, you take organic sulfur, and the child takes organic sulfur, and the kids come back with eye contact. It's the scariest thing you ever want to see. Wow. And, th and then they start talking. Once they've made eye contact, then they actually start not guttural words. They talk in sentences. One 17-year-old kid started talking like he was in England, iambic pentameter. His mom had never heard his voice. Wow. Well, that's amazing. What, what percentage would you think of autistic kids are brought back with sulfur? 100% as long as mom takes the sulfur too. You tell me, tell, why does mom have to take it? They come back with eye contact. The bond was made nursing, whether it was with a bottle or a pap. The bond was made of nursing. And the bond comes back. So I, I still don't quite understand why the mother needs to take the sulfur as well. I'm sure it's a good idea for a Because we haven't had any fathers get the same response. The mothers are where the bond was made. It goes back that far. You know, they, what can you reach in their memory to bring them back? Well, you've got to go all the way back to nursing. Right. And I don't, I don't know the mechanism. I just know that in every case, that's been this, the eye contact thing that has been mentioned. Right. Whether it was a 3-year-old, a 5-year-old, a 7-year-old, a 9-year-old, a 13-year-old, a 17-year-old. We've still got a 45-year-old who's been autistic for 42 years. Gosh, I didn't and know autism mom won't. Yeah, and mom won't take the sulfur. So how you can't force anybody. You, you know, you just can't force anybody to do anything. But kind of when it comes to a kid or even a dog, you know, gee, be proactive. Yes, and uh, so so just sticking with autism for a moment. How quickly have you seen results? <laughs> Three days. Wow. And it really depends on the the uh, insult. Um, we've got Paul and Olive Robinson live in Costa Rica now, but before we ran into Paul, Olive had been in the home in Prunedale, California for 11 years. Had no idea who her husband of 62 years was. And he went every day, and when he found out about the sulfur, he took a bottle entitled Lord's Water into her at this Catholic nursing home every day and the nuns made sure she drank every bit of the water and eight months later Paul walks in the door and, and Olive says good morning Paul wow. so eight months is the longest it's taken to see someone remember who they are and but and the time with the kids is, boy has been one, one boy eight months as well he was 17 that's our iambic pentameter kid and, uh, you know, it's, we, we just want to know what sulfur will do. And, you know, so what we've learned is what it will do. And the reason that I'm talking to you across the pond on, on you know, on the radio, or on the TV, rather, I, I, I just did a, I waved my uh, fingers at everybody in the U.K., just so that you wondered 
if I was still here. Um, we, you know, this is this is not rocket science. This is biology. This isn't even English literature. It's biology. Twenty-four minerals of life. You put them all into play. I mean, I noticed on your website that you've got a lot of superfoods. Okay, well, all of them will work better when sulfur is in play. And everything that works actually had sulfur in it way back when. You know, until we got clever and we wanted to use artificial chemicals to grow our food so that we would become artificial chemicals. So do you think that the sulfur is, is, has got a, a detoxing uh, element to it? So the damage that's happened from the chemical farming and the vaccines, do you think the sulfur is, is, is pulling that out? It's demonstrating that that's exactly what it's doing. Yeah. I mean, you know, we don't expend the money to go and do stool samples. You know, we just say, hey, good, good poop in there or what? You know, if we just look at our poop every once in a while, we get an idea how healthy we are. That's Is that right. against the law in, in Great Britain? You, can you look at your poop? No, and in fact, in Europe, particularly in France, it's encouraged. Um, so one of the things that I found most interesting, one of the things I, I learned above everything uh, from uh, hearing you speak in the past has been regarding the, the Herxheimer, the die-off reaction that you can get okay. from taking too little. And I'd like yes. you to, to explain that because I found that most interesting. It was something incredibly important that everybody, I think, needs to know as to, as to what happens if you take too little. What, you're, what it does is your body sort of recognizes that that would be a nice thing, and so the Herxheimer's is a demand for more. And uh, I don't know if, if uh, Parkland Memorial Hospital rings a bell for anybody in the U.K., but that's where Kennedy went. And so this lady calls us from Parkland Memorial Hospital. It's about 8.30 at night. And, and she says, I'm dying, I'm dying. And I said, I'm very sorry, why are you dying? She said, well, I took a little a quarter teaspoon of yourself when I'm dying. And I said, oh, please, take a, a teaspoon of it now. And she said, well, kill me. And I said, you're in the right place. <laughs> and so she took a, a teaspoon of it, and she and her husband left 10 minutes later. That scenario has been repeated 10 different times from 10 different cities. If you take too little, you can cause your body to go in a, wow, what was that? You know, let's, 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 let's argue. I mean, every time your body hurts, it's demanding something. You know, it, you don't just get hurtful and painful and all that stuff just because you're cute. It's because your body's actually trying to tell you something. You know, hey, you're, we're missing something here. You haven't had any water for the last couple of days. You know, we could become dehydrated. Is water legal in Great Britain? Well, they poison it for us, uh, but um, apart from that, it's legal, yeah. used to be free, I remember that. Not anymore, of course. By the way, the, uh, in India, in India... Hot tap water works. In the UK, hot tap water works. In Russia, hot tap water works. In Israel, hot tap water works. In Nairobi, hot tap water works. When in doubt, hot tap water is a great source of water. There's no chlorine. Really? Mm. Chlorine and uh, calcium combine to form rocks at about 130 degrees. That's what most hot water heaters go to. Oh, I see. That's what ruins the hot water heaters. I told my cousin I wouldn't say that because he sells hot water heaters. I guess I screwed that one up. Yeah, but so it's 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 not something that you know that's a, a miracle thing. It's the thing that was actually taken away from us for the sake of commerce and collateral damage be damned. So imagine one was uh, farming yourself at home and you're, gro you're growing and eating lots of garlic and onions and sulfur containing uh, foods. Um, how much would, would a good meal of onions, say, represent in terms of organic sulfur in, in terms of a, compared to a teaspoonful of, of organic sulfur as crystals, uh, would a decent onion soup grown with healthy onions give you a similar sort of quantity of sulfur? A gallon of it, yeah. A gallon of it. Uh, 
Sophia Lauren, you've heard of this girl? Yeah. Okay, she's been on the, uh, a pound of garlic diet, I guess, since she made the movie Two Women. That's how much sulfur you got to get from garlic, a pound, oh, to get what you get in one teaspoon. Right, yeah. So uh, you're not going to uh, make a lot of friends eating a pound of garlic, really. You're not going to like yourself probably very much. She was married to Carla Ponte. I always thought that was the reason why she ate the garlic. <laughs> <laughs> never, never had a chance to ask the girl. <laughs> but I mean, this is, uh, yeah. I, I've organic people say, "Oh, I could do this, do boom, boom, boom," and yet they respond when they start the sulfur. They've got the best organic, but they don't taste. They can't taste the sulfur. It's not bitter to them. There's the interesting part. It's not bitter to them. Their body already has some sulfur in it, but they still respond. Their hair color changes. Their canes get left behind. Walkers get thrown aside. Uh, wheelchairs become an, uh, an enigma. Uh, MS becomes something that you just use on crossword puzzles because it ain't bothering the way your body's working because the neurological repair happens before the physical repairs happen. You see changes in your vision before you can see changes in your penis. And I know and a, a lot, lot of people. Go ahead. Well, um, uh, people ring me up every week uh, asking me about their penis and uh, <laughs> how to. Uh, yeah, well, they do. Uh, and uh, how to make it uh, a little more uh, firm, should I say? Um, how quickly should we tell people that they might experience results in that particular department? Oh, that's, I had, I had had that asked, question asked earlier of me today, and it all depends on the person. Uh, we have, uh, you know, one study member who has not responded, and he's actually, you know, he's one of our study directors, and there's a, a new product coming out of uh, the East Coast, which is an energy strap. You put it on an area of your body, and you get electrical, you know, frequency stimulation. And so one of the applications is that they're putting it on the penis, and evidently it works. But that's a short-term stimulation. If you're going to get the penis to work, if you're going to get the uh, uh, secreting ability of the vagina to work, then you have to address the cells. You have to allow the cells to regenerate. I'm growing hair on top of a perfectly bald head of 60 years. That's a lie. It's only been 50 years. And it's really embarrassing because they're funny little hairs. But I'm still growing hair up there. Good. It's just, well, yeah, but it's, I mean, it really is. I have to wear a hat just to cover it up. It's sometimes biology is embarrassing. But in this case, an example that I'm growing hair where hair has not grown even before Star Trek was a, a, was a TV thing. Um, turning, you know, yourself up, turning yourself upside down uh, is always a good trick. The first time I met somebody who was, was doing inversion therapy, they bought one of those tables, they could flip themselves upside yes, yes. down. Yes, we have one. And uh, uh, he, he sort of grabbed my hand and forced me to feel his head, and he said uh, I was completely bald, and, and I could feel all this sort of like baby hair growing. He said this has just, yeah. just happened since I started turning upside down and re-stimulating the follicles. And if he would, you know, and if he would add sulfur to his diet, then he could do like our little 88-year-old did. She, you know, went in to see the doctor, and he measured her, and then... He said, yeah, would you get back up here? He measured her again. She had grown an inch and a half. Wow. 88 years old. That's pretty good. Cartilage is collagen. Collagen is a sulfur-based amino acid. There are only 24 minerals of life, and some clown who's dead, J.D. Rockefeller, decided it would be best if you didn't ever get sulfur again. We're going to dig him up again. We dug him up a couple of years ago, and he was still dead. <laughs> uh, you know, it's the uh, we we don't have to suffer the effects of the dead. We really don't. So somebody rang me up, uh, I think, this morning and said um, the uh, uh, that they they've got degenerative discs. Yes. So, Sounds are going to help with that. Yes. I mean, they can't just sit in a chair and, and watch Laugh-In or something and expect things to happen. They actually have to get sunlight. They have to drink water. They have to do exercise. Uh, inversion doesn't hurt. Uh, sun gazing is sometimes very valuable. We have a whole bunch of sun gazers in the study. 
And it's, you know, it's taking your health into your own hands and stop depending on those people who say they know what they're doing. Well, they know exactly you know, what they're doing. They're providing drugs that will keep you addicted for life, probably, and making a lot of money. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned that. What we have found with, with sulfur, and not so much with meth, because meth people don't want to get cured, but heroin addicts who are on methadone are no longer on methadone. And mama, who likes to go to the church and play the piano, is no longer on opiates. My son-in-law, who's sort of blind and in a wheelchair and, is, and employs 28 members of the family, can feel the bottoms of his feet and says he can see gray. It's just biology. If you can regenerate the cells of a scar, the scar will go away and you'll have healthy cells back. And so diabetic neuropathy, for instance, tingling oh, the hands of the yeah, we send the dwarfs to your door with little baseball bats if you still claim neuropathy after six months. <laughs> and, you know, that really should be the same reason for, the, for those who have penises that won't salute the queen. Uh, it's, it's one of the most complicated series, uh, capillary network series, in the body. The heart doesn't have such a strange capillary network that has a valve to shut it off so it stays hard very interesting part of this anatomy, this biology. And if the, if the capillaries cannot become engorged, then you won't salute the queen. It won't happen. But if you can get those, the capillary network to re regenerate, yes, you will. Even the glands becomes more sensitive. It's just biology. You know, and, and we, you know, I'm on the radio across the pond because I want everyone in the UK and everyone worldwide to know that there's something they can do about it. And they can actually be healthy and happy and laugh at my jokes. Well, good. You know, I think the Queen would be thrilled if a lot of people took sulfur and, and she was saluted more often. I, I think she'd feel good about that. <laughs> you know, I'm always happy to help. <laughs> So, and I, I remember you saying earlier that um, you, th you think that sulfur makes people happier. Could that be that it's having an effect on the liver and the gallbladder to, to clean out those two organs? And, no, and that, I think it's not. I, I, there's an art, one of the best articles that we ever found comes from the, the College of Nutrition in Southampton, and it explains what, the, what your immune system is. And it explains that your immune system is all of the sulfur-based amino acids, starting with vitamin B1, taurine, lysine, methionine, cysteine, and you get up to serotonin and endorphins. You're happy when you can make endorphins. I mean, what is, what is, what is cocaine? It makes endorphins. What's heroin? It makes endorphins. That's why people get hooked. Well, you can get hooked on your own endorphins, and you don't have to spend any money down the street. Sounds good. Well, it's it's you know it sounds so simple. It sounds too simple. But I'm sorry, that's biology. Biology is simple. You know the interesting thing about the all of the theories of anti God, you know, stuff, I evolution is how else do you explain how this all got started? As a, as a twice Irish Jewish Cherokee, I have multiple ideas on that one thought. <laughs> so, let me ask you this, Clive. The, where are you with your diabetes now, or is that too personal a question? Uh, well, at the moment, uh, and I have to keep remembering to do it every day, I'm treating myself with sound. I listen to a piece of violin music uh, for about one minute each day, and I'm assured that this is going to put my diabetes uh, completely into order. Other than okay, that... Okay, and, I, and I, 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 you know, uh, Patrick Flanagan is on our show quite often, and, and he describes Schumann's wave to me, which is really close to almost, you know, a perfect pH. And, uh, yeah, of course, we're all the sounds of the planet. Whales talk by sounds. We talk by sounds. The vibrations, the, the frequencies. And the, uh, the frequencies of, that hurt us are
are discordant to our ear. Are you familiar with the 440 slash 432 argument about the, the note A? Um, t tell me. When uh, when Goebbels was was it, was the president of the Philharmonic Society of, of Europe, he changed the frequency of A from 432 to 440 in the hopes that it would incite all the people of Europe to riot. And guess what? It did. Yes, I'd heard so, that, actually, yes. And if, if you go to the archives of American Voice Radio, you can hear Sal Garza, a noted violinist, who can now remember every chart he ever learned from taking sulfur. He doesn't have to look them up anymore. He plays a piece of Bach in both of those frequencies, and the one at 440 makes you pissed off. Yeah, you know, the one at 432 might, well, you go looking for someone to make love to. And, uh, um, yes. the, uh, the, the, the frequency of sulfur, is that in some way connected to that? Uh, no, but sulfur's a, a rhomboid. So, you know, and I don't know what the frequency of sulfur is, and I haven't looked, quite frankly, but it's a seven sided, uh, crystal. And there aren't very many of those. Uh -huh. And and if you leave, if you if you take sulfur and let the set the glass aside, it'll grow crystals. And you wait long enough, the crystals will disappear and go. And you'll think somebody stole the crystals. Yeah, they went back into the air. It's a cycle. Everything on the planet is a cycle. What we need to do is just get rid of the one percent. Then the cycle will be not out of balance. Yes, quite. Exactly. And we don't have to. No, no shots fired. You know, everyone takes sulfur, and all the money that was spent to keep the one percent going will go away, and the one percent will go broke. Well, you know, I've I've noticed that the the one percent, uh, you know, if they ever do retire, I know some of them don't. They probably like the yeah. continued adulation, but the ones who do retire, what generally happens is they uh, uh, go back to their their expensive home and garden. And I think the psychopaths in the world should be given jobs as gardeners really early on. Well, we think the doctors will become the gardeners. All right. The most common retirement area for a doctor is gardening. Well, hopefully they'll all be unemployed soon, or the vast majority of them. I, I think 95% of them wouldn't need to be employed if people knew pro properly about nutrition and un understood how to look after their bodies. We have, yeah, we have a, a, a question we say to people who are going to go see their doctor. What color is your new car? Now think about that. <laughs> and if they have a new car, they say, oh, it's red. Did you see it in the parking lot? That red Mercedes, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> it's why they came to work that day. Uh, it's, and they, uh, I hope some doctors are listening to your show, and I'm sorry. I appreciate doctors who, are, who care for the people they're caring for. I don't really appreciate doctors who are only doing it for the money because, you know, that's, why would you? Why would you spend all that much time just to make a buck? You could have gone into, uh, you know, a bank robber. They make pretty good money. Um, unfortunately, I think doctors, because they're told what to do, you know, the, the the they're told what drugs to prescribe, and if they don't prescribe the right ones, ones they're in danger of getting struck off. Um, I, I think the problem is that they've got no choice but to make money because they they went into the profession to get people well but they find the profession yeah. itself is stopping them from doing the job they really right. wanted to do. So they can't get people well, so they might as well just make money. Well, and you know, when we started the study, we had no intention of making money, but we've got a, a chiropractor who's opened her doors in a clinic in uh, Minneapolis. And she said, uh, I, I think this, the, the sulfur's a curse. And I said, what do you mean? I said, well, because they, you know, once they start taking the sulfur, they don't come back. <laughs> <laughs> and and I said, well, and so why are you ordering thirty six pounds? She says, because that's what's keeping the doors open. <laughs> so and it's nice when. Sorry, go on. Well, I mean, she she recognizes that the only reason that these other people are coming is because the folks who went to see her are better. Best testimonial in the world: your neighbor ain't sick anymore. Yeah. Exactly. 
So uh, we've got a little bit of time left, and I'd like to run through a few of the other things that uh, sulfur is so well known for, apart from uh, the resolution of pain and arthritis and various other things. Um, I noticed from my notes that uh, it has uh, an effect on uh, clearing uh, our, our arterial problems. Uh, has that been your experience? Yes. And, and, and what used to be my job is to recognize bright plaque in the retina and send them over to the doctors to have their uh, arteries cleaned out. I mean, I didn't ever consult another doctor. I just called and said, hey, I got a bright plaque in the eye, and they said, send them over, and they did surgery that day. They would clean out the uh, arteries, the carotid. Uh, but with, with sulfur, it breaks down the calcium carbonate. It breaks down the calcium carbonate in your joints. It breaks down the calcium carbonate in your, uh, in your capillaries, in your arterioles. You know, and when you have something plug up an artery in your head, you really walk funny. And those people don't walk funny anymore. Patrick Flanagan doesn't stutter anymore. He thought it was a stutter. He had a stroke. Yes, I heard about that. And, you know, it's the... Uh, I was trained to photograph strokes in one picture, one photograph, a person walking, and I would catch them dragging their right foot, which, or the left foot, which would also allow me to catch their eyelid in the corner of their mouth, all one picture. And what I hear, because I don't get a chance to see that, but what I hear is their, their speech is cleared up. Their wives are saying their eyelids are no longer drooping, and they don't wear out their left shoe anymore. You know, if you want to see if someone's had a stroke, look at their feet. Uh, I've now, noticed that uh, strokes are very often uh, caused by magnesium deficiency. Well, it, and I, I wouldn't argue with that, but what I'm saying is the magnesium deficiency won't clear the stroke, the, the sulfur will. Right. Because the sulfur, when it combines with the calcium carbonate, it breaks down the calcium carbonate bond, and the rest is wished away, and the blood flow, you know, starts up again. Biology's not that tough. You know, we're, we are plumbing. We're just plumbing. <laughs> Don't you guys still have plumbing in England? Yeah, yeah, we do. Does it work? Uh, well, it's getting a bit old now since the Victorians put it in, but yeah, at least so they had good plumbing engineers when they put the plumbing together. And when it comes to our body, the way that we eat, we mess up our plumbing. Whether it's arterial plumbing or lymphatic plumbing or gastrointestinal plumbing, I mean, you know, biggest problem we hear about is, is constipation, and we don't have anybody in the study that's constipated anymore. I'm sorry, they're all pooping quite often. Yeah, very important. And uh, presumably they're getting thinner as well, or, or their weight, weight is stabilizing in, in correctly in both directions with the addition of sulfur. Yeah, Stephanie Senna from MIT published an article, Could Sulfur Deficiency Be a Contributing Factor in Obesity, uh, Heart Disease, Alzheimer's, Crohn's, Fibromyalgia, and Wasting Disease, which is cancer to a biologist, and I called her on the phone. I said, yes. I mean, we've lost a million pounds. Pounds sterling, even. And, but that, we don't talk about it, because that just happens. When your biology works, then, you're, you, know, then you, you utilize the weight that we are supposed to utilize the weight. And uh, people with uh, IBS, Crohn's, uh, those sort of bowel problems, uh, presumably beneficial there as well. You know what a bed sore is, don't you? Yeah. The cubitus ulcer. When you have bowel problems, i.e. ulcerative colitis and things of that sort, you actually get a bed sore inside your colon, wow. inside your large bowel. And we had a, a, a fellow I'd known for years. His mom had had uh, open-heart surgery, and he went to see her, and there was something really stinky in the room. And he said, let me see your backside. And she said, you've never seen my backside. And she said, I'm going to see it now. And he had, you know, it was about an orange size decubitus sulfur. So we ran home, got his sulfur, and mixed it with baking soda, made a paste out of it, came back and slapped it on her butt. The next day it was pink tissue. Goodness. So a sort of a, an alkalizing effect of the bicarb combined with the sulfur was all it took to put enough oxygen back into the area and create exactly. the voltage. Uh, uh, 
Yeah, I will, and stop the acid reduction because that's what an uh, ulcer is. It's an anaerobic, you know, acid eating away of your of your skin. Yeah. And so it does the same thing in in the gut. I mean, you know, I I had uh, fall down on the ground uh, gastroenteritis for twenty seven years. I mean, I can remember trying to discuss things to a bunch of medical students, and all of a sudden I'm falling on the ground, and they're down trying to think I've had a heart attack or something. I said, no, it's just my gut. Oh, took you a while <laughs> to figure that one out, didn't it? 27 years? Yeah, well, then the sulfur fixed it in four days. Gosh. So, you know, that's it's just biology. It's not rocket science. It's not magic medicine. It's just biology. You put sulfur back into your system. If you don't respond favorably, we will send the dwarfs to your door with little baseball bats to hit you in the shins because you didn't do it right. <laughs> I think your way of doing business is lovely. Uh, I think it's uh, charming and uh, it's going to be effective too. Um, well, you know, I, I think we'll see. Uh, and the... Uh, uh, and, you know, our association is interesting because you can see some of these people. Like, I can see some of the people. But of the 250,000, you know, I think I, there may be 800 people that I've seen. The rest are a voice on the phone and a photograph. And so when you can see someone move, you can determine what their neurology is all about. Uh, when you see someone return to a proper posture, you get an idea that, oh, that doesn't hurt anymore. People who slump over, they slump over because it hurts to stand up straight. When you can stand up straight, it doesn't hurt anymore. Well, very good. And um, so the chiropractors must be going out of business. No, they're selling sulfur. <laughs> We have more we have more chiropractors and nutritionists in our in our group of clinicians than we do MD PhDs and, and those guys because right. they're more concerned about what's going on. The chiropractor wants to sell you a seven thousand dollar visit for a hundred years. He's not interested in your health. He's interested in your money. But a chiropractor who looks you right in the eye and is interested in where your pain is from and actually looks at you and touches you and stuff. No, he's you know he's interested in your well being. The majority of doctors I've met over the years, they are interested in that. But there's a 1% to 3% who just want to buy a new Red Benz. Yeah, for sure. So, so, so let's um, just get uh, a bit specific now. I want people to understand why uh, getting proper crystalline uh, sulfur is key, why we don't want it ground up into a powder, and why we particularly don't want it to have any additives in it. Uh, the sulfur that uh, uh, you provide, and now uh, my company, Ancient Purity, is also about to provide, is absolutely pure, isn't it? There are no additives whatsoever, and tell us why this is so critical. Well, it's actually dirty enough to work. Um, when, when, you, when you take a precipitate, which, which is now made by spraying, um, but you don't have to kill it to death with, you know, uh, trying to make it too clean. Um, as long as it doesn't have a chance to interact with anything else, I started out mentioning that sulfur can make 146 different compounds out of 92 naturally occurring elements, and it never combines with iodine. So... When you put an anti-caking ingredient like silicon dioxide or potassium permanganate, you change the nature of the sulfur. You've still got a pretty good laxative, but you're not going to regenerate any cells. You're not going to make scar tissue go away. You know, oh, the one thing you didn't mention, and it never happens in England, depression. We defy someone to be depressed after six months of sulfur. We defy them. We double dare them. Oh, that's excellent. And there's a... Yeah, and there's a Harvard professor whose name is Tal Ben-Shahar, who is somewhere in the world, and we don't know where. He was on The Daily Show, and John Daly said, what is this about happiness? I mean, you're teaching a class on happiness. What is depression? And Tal Ben-Shahar thought about it, and he said, depression is a lack of sulfur. We want to know who told him. Hmm. Because it's proven to be effective in every single case. 
Well, that's very interesting. And I, I mean, I, I, I would assume that probably 98% of us here in the UK probably have a deficiency of sulfur. Do you, do you think it's as high as that number or where would you Well, you have, a defici- you have a deficiency in sunlight. Well, that's true. I mean, you know, and that's... Uh, it, vitamin D3 tablets, one of our study members has developed nine tumors in his brain. He was not taking sulfur at the time. And in the research, I find that, yeah, there's, uh, old folks are getting tumors in their brains from taking vitamin D3. Go out in the sun. Look at the sun on the ground. That's all the vitamin D you need. You just don't need another form of vitamin D because sometimes it gets clogged up in the blood-brain barrier in your brain. I hadn't, I hadn't heard that. I mean, when I started taking vitamin D in fairly decent doses, that was when all colds and flus stopped for me. So I used to good, get colds good. every year. Okay, but you weren't, you weren't taking forty thousand uh, units of vitamin D three. Um, not per day, but I. T- I no, I, no, this is this this was twice a day. Oh, I see. Well, that is, that is quite quite a deal. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't ask me why. I have no idea. I can understand when someone else takes that much vitamin C, but I do not understand that in the notion of uh, vitamin D. You know, uh, I think there's still tuberculosis in the UK, and if people are put in the sun, the tuberculosis goes away. It's the only cure for t- TB is sunlight. And that used to be the that used to be the classic cure, wasn't it? They'd send 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 you away to some hot sunny country. Or to a solarium. We used to have two flint glass solariums in Salt Lake, and we don't anymore. They tore them both down. One was on the Children's Hospital, and the other was on the VA. And the TB's back. You know, you can't help but get it back. If you've got crap that ends up in your lungs, and, you know, that tuberculosis is just a, really easy, a really easy thing to develop. But it's a real easy thing to get rid of with sunlight. And no antibiotic has ever cured TB. No antibiotic has ever cured a virus. Now, that's dead air, Clive. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I was just wait, waiting for you to say more words of genius. But, oh, no, um, that was good. I'm and, sorry. <laughs> uh, 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 that and the fact that my earpiece keeps dropping out of my ear. <laughs> so, well, uh, actually, we're getting pretty near the end of the show here. Uh, is, yeah, is, yes. Is there anything more that's really important that you'd like to add? Anything we've missed? Yeah, it's the sulfur doesn't do squat; it's the water. It's the oxygen in the water. Yeah. Uh, and and the reason I say that sulfur doesn't do squat because every bit of sulfur you put into your body leaves in twelve hours. Sometimes it leaves, tracking with it radioactive elements from Fukushima, um, bad words from the monarchy. Uh, you know, it's it's just the nature of the beast. It's the way that biology works. The sulfur cannot enter the cell, never enters the cell. So it's always in a, in, it's like teamsters. You know, they, they bring the stuff and take the stuff away. They're never allowed to stay overnight. And And that's what makes it work. And so when you take that aspect, the thing you can't store in your body away, then you end up storing all the toxins. So all of the toxins we we believe are leaving, we're just not spending the money to find out. If the people are healthy, why would you spend the money? Sure. You know, the, the, think about it. If, if, if you make uh, a reasonable uh, working man's salary in, in England and you just increased your salary by 35% or more because you're healthy, you're a rich man. Yeah. Um, you know... I, it's it's the it's we are all cells within the matrix, and our bodies are all cells within the matrix, and when we keep that in mind, then the matrix grows. You know, I mean, it's the it it doesn't it doesn't become too heavy-handed. It doesn't become a government or a war-making thing. We begin, you know, we we continue the process of discovering why we're here. Why in the hell are we here? Well, my understanding is, is that we're, the reason we're here is to help others. What, why the others are here, God knows. Well, no, I mean, as far as, you know, the, the, uh, if, you're, if you follow the biblical principles, Adam and Eve were supposed to take care of the garden. 
Okay, well, the garden is the planet. And we're doing a pretty poor, poor job. And the problem is, you know, if we're made from the earth, another biblical reference, and I believe that's the case, there was sulfur in our making. When you take the sulfur away, we all get sick. You put the sulfur back, we and life becomes reasonable. One, two. 2014 is the year of reason. Oh, is it? Mm-hmm. Good. Well, or all these, yeah, or all these old folks are lying to us. <laughs> I mean, you know, it boils down to that. Can, can we really have 250,000 people lying to us? 250,000 people lying to us, so how do you mean? Mental clarity is, is almost uh, part of the standard routine, no matter what was their problem before. They're noticing that they don't forget what they uh, lost when they went through the doorway. You know, if you don't want to lose something, don't ever go through a doorway. Well, they remember what they lost before they went through the doorway. It's uh, from truckers to, uh, to attorneys to doctors to violinists, uh, to, you know, 103-year-olds driving all over Hawaii, they have remarkable mental clarity. They're as sharp as a tack. There is no moss growing on our seniors. They are the source of our information. They'll talk. Brilliant. Now, just to be clear, um, you reckon that the minimum dose uh, would be uh, a teaspoonful a day, would you? Twice a day. Te one teaspoonful twice a day. Yeah, unless you're more than 200 pounds. How many, pounds, how many stones is that? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> more, more, more than I want to be. I know that much. Yeah, because we, the people in India tell us how many stones they are. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're, we're still in this old-fashioned world ourselves. <laughs> so, so, so a teaspoonful twi uh, twice a day would be ideal, uh, but then if one had a serious condition, I heard you say, I think, uh, two tablespoonfuls a day. A viral condition, yeah. If you've got, a viral con if you've got the virus, you, know, you get the virus, that's a tablespoon twice a day. If you happen to have cancer and are undergoing therapy, then it's a tablespoon three times a day. All of those people are alive. All of them were told to go and die. Nothing more we can do. Many of them are not taking sulfur now. They thought it was a remedy. A few of them have already called back and said, I think I need more sulfur. <laughs> so let's, let's cover where they can get it. Um, uh, uh, t t tell us, uh, uh, how, how can people find out more about you? Uh, through Cisna? Uh, yeah, our, our email address is organicsulfur at Cisna.com. Now, the reason that Clive is partnered with us, sending sulfur to England is a pain in the pocket book. But if it's sent in mass and then you can break it down, then that, that pain doesn't end up being $20 a pound, which is almost what it is. And so the, uh, you know, for the UK, then uh, contact Clive. If you're in Europe, then it's apothecaria.com. Uh, Edward Snowden has not agreed to be our study director in Russia yet, so we can't send you to him. Anyway, his email address is hidden. Uh, if you're in Hawaii, you contact Hash Goldstein at Health Talk Hawaii. Uh, he has a new book called The uh, A Sane Diet for an Insane World. He's a 74-year-old baseball-playing vegan. And uh, who doesn't have asthma anymore? Oh, that's what it is, asthma. Asthma was invented in England. If you enjoy your nasal twang from your asthma, do not take sulfur. <laughs> It'll go away. Well, that's good to know. I, 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 you know that, it, that if you use Celtic salt in a glass of water and then put a bit of Celtic salt on the tongue, in most cases, asthma attacks just stop, boom, right like that. Right, and what we found from our seniors is you put a uh, quarter teaspoon of pink salt, Himalayan salt, or Redmond real salt from Utah under your tongue 30 minutes after the sulfur that all of your high blood pressure medications go away, all of your cholesterol meds go away, all of your meds regarding your heart go away. 
So people taking those, those medications need to be pretty careful if they're going to be starting to use salt and sulfur that they don't accidentally kill themselves. No, no, it, we've tried to kill them all, Clive. We really have. But I, I'm worried about their doctor's medi med medications then, then, let's say, lowering yeah, well, their blood pressure to a dangerous degree. Could that happen? Well, that's, what, that's why you go to the doctor, and then the doctor takes you off the medications. We don't. Exactly. I just wanted to make that. And the doctors clear. never ask. They never ask what they never ask what you're doing. They never ask. Oh, it, was just <laughs> it was just a misdiagnosis in the first place, wasn't it? Something like that. I mean, like uh, the woman, you know, three years on um, on injectable insulin. I really think it's because the doctor didn't think she would take her pills. But putting a type that, two diabetic on on insulin is insanity. Can be very dangerous. Yeah, but it's totally unnecessary. Um, I'm not a doctor, so I don't, you know, I, but I just know that of our diabetics, no one has lost their vision, no one's lost a finger, no one's lost a toe, and most of their penises work, and, uh, the, uh, but the vision part is really what's remarkable, and, you know, I don't know when the last time you had a visual feel or a photograph done of your eye, but if it's convenient, get it done, because it'll be nice, we don't have any photographs of the, uh, scars of diabetes going away. We have the fact that they are telling us they're gone away because they can see in that quadrant that they couldn't see in before, but we don't have photographs. And I love retinal photographs. Well, I've had had some high quality uh, retinal photographs taken last year, so uh, uh, fantastic. I'll, we'll uh, cover it. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll, then, um, I'll 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 let you know what happens with the next batch after after I've done all the sulfur. Well, the other interesting thing is, I never thought I would see that. I never thought I would see. Uh, diabetic blood, you know, scarring. I mean, I've I've seen uh, Brooklyn bridges in people's eyes. I've seen skyscrapers in their eyes. They can't see anything out, but I can see in. You know, and it's just amazing what you can do once you allow blood to congeal. What it, you know, what it can build. But if you can break it down and take it away, then you can see again, so, and the cells are regenerated. So, so clearly, people with blood clots need to take sulfur, don't they? Oh yeah, uh, the. Uh, in Stanley Jacobs' book, they describe a 70-year-old man who had a, a lesion in the corpus callosi, and they suggested they do brain surgery, and he was in Stanley's pain clinic, and Stanley said, why don't you just do the sulfur? Well, after five years, the defect was gone, and his, you know, the immobility was gone. The sulfur had cleared the, the corpus callosi of this lesion. Brilliant. And... And I thought, well, and that's about the only reference he makes. But now we're seeing, you know, World War II vet who's had his right arm hanging down his side for since World War II. He calls me on the phone and says, I just picked my nose. And I said, that's cute. And he said, with my right hand. Hmm. I learned that you can't regenerate nerves. The study has demonstrated that that's bullshit. Pardon my French. Excellent. He, you know, so there, there isn't anything out there that can't respond. If you really appreciate being able to complain about your health, do not take sulfur. <laughs> well, so good. So um, now uh, my company, Ancient Purity, and the website is ancientpurity.com, uh, we're going to have supplies of uh, Patrick's finest quality sulfur in, I hope, about one week's time. Uh, we have a new website which should be going online in about one week's time, which is going to have many of the things that we've been discussing in past programs like the essential oils and the radiation stones and so on. And so anybody who wants sulfur, uh, they could place an order now uh, with us, but unfortunately it's not on the website yet, but will be in a few days. Uh, or they could phone up and, and place orders. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, the supply that we've ordered from you will be arriving any day now. And I, I, I personally took it to the post office, so I hope so. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Patrick. So, and, well, you know, for, but the, for those people who are listening, if, if, if this interests you, then do the thing that's absolutely necessary. Figure out your body weight, cut it in half, then t take that in ounces before the sun goes down. That way, when the sulfur arrives, then, you know, because you're not going to be able to call me from the UK and, and have me ask you the questions whether or not you're, you know, dreaming in color. You know, think about that. Are you dreaming in color? I don't think so. I, I was dreaming color. 
I know, but you're Clive. <laughs> and the other people are, are Brits. And you know, I, I, in the 15 years that I've been asking these questions of the study members, and the 45 years I've been asking them in the clinical situations, 60% of the people don't have the faintest idea what you're talking about when you say dreamy in color. They have no idea. Do you really think that, that many people dream in black and white? Well, and then there's another 30% of those that don't dream at all. Oh, yes. And they're the easy ones to tell because their voice sounds 25 years older, they look 25 years older, and they think 25 years older. Not that being that's a bad thing, but in this case, it's yeah, they're, they're slow before their time. Right. And it's all about the water. Well, quite. I couldn't agree more. Water is so important. And uh, well, look, I'd like to thank you very, very much for coming on, Patrick. It's been, been a great pleasure to have you on. And um, I look forward to reporting back in a few short weeks when everybody's going to be completely fixed. And all well, the problems will end. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind, after you've taken a five days call, and I'll ask you the same questions that you can ask somebody who asked, you know, calls to ask dumb questions. Yeah, perfect. Fair enough. Fair enough. Thank you very, very much, Clive. And to the audience, thank you for putting up with an Irishman. <laughs> you sound quite American to me, for a Cherokee, Irish, Jewish person. Yeah, well, yeah, but if, if you go to County Cork, there's a granite marker outside of Cork to my grandfather. He blew up the British garrison in 1888. <laughs> and it was never rebuilt. <laughs> and he became a U.S. citizen real fast. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine it might be better to leave quickly. Good. Well, all right. thank you so much, and thank you for all our viewers, and we look forward to uh, treating you to something equally special next week. All the best. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.